But let's go to Vancouver. And Lawrence Gilman is the Canucks Vice President, Hockey Operations, Assistant General Manager. And you get your last preseason game tonight in the drama of it. It's against the New York Rangers. Have you uh, ran into Elaine Vigneault at all? Just chatted with him and Scott O'Neill about five minutes ago. And how's he doing? Uh, he looks really good, actually. He, uh, he's a good dude. And uh, I heard rumors last night that he was out on the town in Vancouver, and uh, he showed up no worse for wear this morning. <laughs> so the, the trade for Tortorella for Alain Vigneault, was there any draft picks involved in that trade, Lawrence? Or is it just a uh, well, straight-up deal? there was deal? rumors that there was going to be a uh, player to be named later, and it was either going to be Lauren Henning or myself. Well, New York's not bad. No, but Vancouver's not bad either, actually. No. It's been good to me. Uh, what uh, What do you make of this preseason? Uh, only, only one victory, but uh, undergoing a, a transition into John Tortorella's system. Does it take that much time? Uh, I think it does. I mean, we're talking uh, about a vastly different coaching system that has to formulate uh, their own opinion on players. Um, we've also integrated a lot of a lot of different players into our games. We've looked at a lot of kids, and uh, you know, we haven't. You know, admittedly, we we haven't played great over the the course of our first five games. I guess we played well in Phoenix or against Phoenix, but I wasn't there to attend it. Uh, but it's it's a work in progress, and you know, obviously tonight is our final tune-up, so I think you're going to see a roster as close to our starting lineup as possible. Now, Lawrence, wondering, you mentioned the two coaches and what you've seen and the the imprint of John Tortorella versus the coaching imprint of Elaine Vino. Well, it's hard to judge initially because John spent the first two games upstairs with us watching, um, but I have had the opportunity to watch him interact with the players. And uh, his approach is more hands-on, uh, I think due in no small part to the fact that he is trying to get to know our team and wants to learn what the players are about, uh, both on the ice and off the ice. You know, Lane had been here seven years, so he had a high degree of comfort. And really, uh, you know, our training camps were more or less running themselves for the last couple of years. So they definitely have different styles, um, I think we're going to see that. Uh, it'll be more pronounced once the regular season starts. Chatting with a member of the Canucks front office, Lawrence Gilman, on Hockey Central at noon with Darren Millard, Nick Kiprios, and Gordy Stellick. This is a scenario where you also have the background of your goaltender, and Roberto Luongo, coming in after he thought he was going to move on. How much one-on-one time have you had with Luongo, and where's his state of mind? Actually, I've had a fair bit. Uh, you know, I attended... Uh, the, the the meeting that Mike had with him in Florida, where we spent uh, three plus hours with Roberto and his wife talking about our situation. Uh, I've spoken to him a little bit during camp. Uh, Roberto's been Roberto's been great. Uh, you know, first and foremost, he's an exceptional human being. He's a great teammate, uh, and he's a he's a player who's been captain of this group. So he's a person of extremely high character. You know, a situation has been an adjustment for him in the sense that obviously he didn't think he'd be here, but he's been around the game for a long time. He understands how the business works and he's a consummate professional. And moreover, he's got a tremendous amount to prove. I think he clearly wants to prove to the rest of the world that he's a top goal, still a top goaltender in the National Hockey League. He's playing for a spot on the Olympic roster. Uh, He wants to be the goaltender that backs Canada to consecutive gold medals and he wants to win the Stanley Cup. So, we were perfectly comfortable with him in, in the role as our starter. He's going to play a ton of games this year, and he's been good. Did, did you have to sell him during that one on, or that meeting that you had with uh, uh, Mike and, and his wife? Well, I don't think we had to sell him because he's under contract to us for seven years uh, or so. But, uh, you know, we, we explained to him, we took him through our, our, uh, the situation that occurred with him from um, – beginning with uh, our loss to Los Angeles in the Stanley Cup final in 2012 to uh, the time that we met with him and talked about all the events that that occurred, those that didn't, where we stood uh, at that point in time or at this point in time. And we articulated that, uh, you know, we were able to make the trade with Corey Schneider because we have 100% confidence in his ability to backstop our team uh, to a season uh, to make the playoffs and to compete for the Cup final. Lawrence, so much has been made out uh, with Toronto losing a pretty good, uh, tough role player in Clarkson. You guys, to a lesser extent, with Zach Cassian. Just overall, his development and, and where he's 
gone. Obviously, it's, it's a horrible way to start the season, yet um, is the progression slowed down a little bit with Cassian? Well, I mean, he started the year last year playing with the Twins. He had five goals in seven games or something like that. And uh, we, you know, our coaching staff uh, took him off that line, played, uh, put Alex Burroughs, who has a pretty good body of work with Henrik and Daniel, uh, and Zach, you know, played up and down throughout the roster. And it's, uh, you know, he, he's had his ups and downs. There's, there's no question about it. This, uh, Len, this latest uh, issue, you know, the suspension for uh, the rest of the preseason and five games to start the season doesn't help. Uh, but, you know, we keep in mind the fact that Zach is still a very young player. Uh, you know, he was eligible uh, to go back to junior uh, last year. And he is, uh, he is, you know, the reason we made the deal to get Zach is that he is a commodity that is very difficult to find and extremely effective in today's National Hockey League in the sense that he's a big man, uh, he can skate, he can handle a puck and shoot, and he can intimidate. And there are very few players like that around. And, you know, Boston has a very effective one in Milan Lucic, who you know, we saw a lot of, um, you know, we've seen a lot of in our tenure. Uh, we believe Zach can, can be a player like that. Uh, in fairness to him, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to say that he will be, but he is that type of commodity, and it is incumbent upon us to continue to work with him and to uh, help him get there. But at the end of the day, you know, as I say, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. And Zach has to continue to put in the work and continue to move forward. And there's no question he's a, a work in progress, but we think that he's going to be fine in the long run. Is conditioning an issue? I, I think I, I heard uh, Torts talk about uh, how he's plans on getting him uh, in pretty good shape during the break. Uh, bad connection. <laughs> Ask the question again. Is conditioning an issue with him? I think Torts made a comment on how he'll be happy to you know, help uh, get him ready after uh, his five-game uh, suspension is over. Actually, his conditioning was very good coming into camp. Uh, you know, all across the board, we really uh, our players came in in really good shape. Uh, Zach was no different than anybody else. Uh, obviously, not playing the last games of our pre, the last three games of our preseason, and not playing the first five games of our regular season will mean that he's going to put in a fair amount of time on the ice and, uh, you know, working on his conditioning. So it will only but improve. Uh, that being said, uh, you know, Nick, we'd rather, we'd obviously much rather have him in our lineup than uh, getting bag skated every day. You know, Lawrence, uh, I wonder the whole, the pressure element that it's kind of like the Detroit Red Wings. They really started winning Stanley Cups once people stop being disappointed they hadn't won. It was almost like there was less pressure. And I'm wondering in Vancouver for four or five years, these great and heightened expectations. I know you still have great expectations yourself internally, but in some ways are guys able to breathe a little bit more that way? Well, that's a really good question. Uh, I actually think that that's probably the case. Um, you know, I, I clearly the expectations here have been unbelievably high uh, over the last few years, particularly uh, from 2011 on. And it seems at this point in time, you know, we keep hearing that the window has closed. That's the expression that uh, seems to get uh, bandied about. Um, and I think that... Uh, you know, we are we, we still have all the elements that it that it takes um, to be a championship caliber team. We have strength down the middle, you know, and Henrik and, and uh, Ryan Kessler. We have a broad base on our blue line uh, with, with Kevin Bieksa, Alex Edler, Dan Hamhuis, Jason Garrison, et cetera. And we have Roberto Luongo. Uh, we think we we still have a team that's competitive, but as we learned in 2011. Uh, it isn't the best team that wins the Stanley Cup. It's the team that's winning, that's playing the best at, the, at that time. And there's a lot of elements that go into that. You know, for us, we're playing in a new division now, which is going to be uh, significantly more competitive than the last division we played at. It's a new playoff format. We have a great deal of work to do in the 82 games uh, before the playoffs begin to qualify for the playoffs and secure home ice advantage uh, and attempt to win the division. But, uh, you know, in the confines of these four walls, here in Rogers Arena, we certainly think we have, we still have what it takes to compete for the Cup. Nobody covers the Vancouver Canucks uh, more than the uh, crew out of Sportsnet Pacifica. We wish you the best of luck. Uh, thanks for taking the time. Thanks, guys. It's been a pleasure being on.